So coming when I when I came back, I think that's when we started making the phone calls with Ian. Ian was in South Africa. We we'll talk even while I was in the States. I'm like, I'm feeling, I'll tell him like, man, I feel like I need, I'm gonna do an album. I need to do an album. I need to do an album. And 2008, I get this revelation. Make an album. And I realize, and the first thing that comes to mind is Love Revolution. Mm. So, and I get, so I get back, I start calling Ian. Ian is like Magnus is in Lusaka. I call Magnus and we, we start connecting and we said, let's do this project. Let's do an album. Let's start working on a project. And that's when um, Ian was also, I'm like, God is telling me I need to go back to Zambia. Ian's as, as well as like, yeah, God's mm. telling me the same thing. I need to go back to Zambia. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. And so he's in South Africa. And we had great opportunities. There are churches that wanted us to lead worship for them. What? And different things. And one of the best revelations, I remember this lady just came and told me one time. She says, you know what? Guys telling me it's going to be hard back in Zambia. It's going to be hard. But eventually, it's going to work out. I said, really? She said, yeah. Because everybody's like, oh, you're just going to go and change the thing. <laughs> but I remember her revelation. She says, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. You're going to go through a lot of things that are going to change you. Mm. but you're you're at the end of the day like it's gonna be better. worth it yeah. yeah it's gonna be worth it so when i came back the first thing so you come back in 2008 2009 nine okay so the first job i had was um and at the time like my my girlfriend at the time we'd broken up so then we got back together when i came back and that is the wife now. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm like, so, I hope that's yeah. the wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, if not, don't bring yeah, it up. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? And so, and so, yeah, so, you know, we, so when I came back, we, um, we, you know, it was, it was like, I started serving at my church as mm. a youth director. Um, and that was another experience altogether. Is a learning experience altogether. It served there till about 2011. Mm. But during this period of time, um, I w- I've been learning, just learning a lot. And we get to a place. So we're, we're, we're after. Anyway, I'll, I'll get to that later. No problem. So we're starting to work on this project with Magnus, and we just can't seem to find the sound. We're having such a hard time finding the sound. It was, we make it, we stop, we make it, okay, cool, you know. Um, because again, like the project that we're trying to create, we don't feel no one has done it before. Mm, mm. You know, no one has really attempted this where we're from. And the sounds we're trying to make are not anything anyone is trying to do. Yep. You know, the reference is always something outside. And when people were telling me, oh no, you know, are you sure you're gonna try to do English? I'm just like, oh, y'all listen to R. Kelly and Celine Dion. Like, <laughs> exactly. you, you know what I'm saying? But, the, but there's things in life that really changes. And so for me, I'd say one of the biggest changes in my life was this moment. Like this moment was real. So what I didn't mention prior was on the day when I was leaving for the States at the airport, there's only one guy who came. Only one of my friends came to mm. the airport. He was serving in the Air Force. His name was Luasi. So I'll get to that. That's probably one of the second most life-changing incidents in my life. Um, so now in 2009, the year I'd returned, um, it was November 22nd. So I understand my, so my dad, cool guy, we're bonding. We're having such an amazing time for me being back. We are both huge wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you know, and it's it's just chilling every Mm -hmm. time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Family wise, we'd gone when he had lost his job. We'd gone through such a hard time. Mm. You know, we'd gone through such a hard time. Um, You know, of course, financially, um, the government didn't want to give him his benefits. It was a lot of you'd hear here are things that a lot of things were intentional mm. you know to kind of crush the family my mom uh had a business a hair lotion that she had started which was really just an amazing hair lotion mm. 
you know, it makes hair grow. My dad even had a patch here and his hair grew. She's prayerful woman. There's not a person I've ever met who just spends more time. Like for me, when I was growing up, all out here at 3 a.m., my parents would pray. Mm-mm-mm-mm. That was their life. People would come to them for wisdom. People would come for them to discipline their own kids. People would come to them for counseling. My mom's just done so much. Amazing woman. And so in 2011, there was a time that there was a lady who came and bought some lotion from her. Her name was Minerva. And uh, so she went to, she was flying to Japan. So she was really excited. Oh, there's people in Japan who want your lotion. I've got some business there. Okay, cool, great. So mom didn't think any of it. Later on, I was getting back from school. It was 2001. I was in 11th grade. I'm getting back from school. And I find there's a huge argument. There's some guys in, there's a guy with the police uniform and there's two people and they're claiming they're from DEC, mm. Drug Enforcement Commission, mm. and they're with Minerva. Like, no, we've your lotion, we confiscated it to the airport when this woman was trying to fly to Japan. So apparently, they, when they caught Minerva at the airport, they're like, oh, this lotion has cannabis. Yeah. What? Cannabis, yeah. So they drive, take her, they drive her to U- University Teaching Hospital. They went to the labs, then they come out. It's like, yeah, it's tested positive for cannabis. So, you know, we're there and you can tell like Minerva is like, I don't know what's going on. Mm. You know, and she's annoyed because they've just, I mean, they're, they're, they're saying they're going to yeah. So my mom's there and it was September the 14th. I'll never forget. It was a Friday. And they're like, oh, we're going to do this whole, no, we, we, we have a search warrant. So my dad calls a lawyer. She came uh, and the search warrant was for the day before. But she's like, okay, you know what? Let them, right? Let them do this, but just keep an eye on how they're doing the search. So, if we you know we're, we've got my dad's very annoyed. He's like, Who sent you? Is it, is it this president? Is it what? Is it what? You know what I'm saying? Because he's like, Why, you know, when you attack a man's wife, that's a whole different Yeah. you know? So, checking and they don't find anything. Then they say, No, we're, we're summoning her for questioning to come on the 16th on a Sunday. So, my dad leaves the house, drives off with my mom. We're like at home. Then my dad comes back alone. And we're like, what happened? And he sits on the couch. And this is the first time. That was like, that was like seeing Mufasa at his weakest. He, mm. my dad starts crying, like loudly. And now all of us are crying because they're like, he didn't come back with mom. Mm. And finding out she's been locked up. And they're saying she'll be in court tomorrow on the 17th. So we all show up court the next day and it's like so quick okay what do 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 adjourned 26 what does that mean is she really no she's still in jail and she's like in the worst jail man like she's so my mom was in jail and this trial kicks off so four four different lawyers join on board and all of them do it for pro bono. These are some of the best lawyers in Zambia who have defended and they all, because they've all in some way either been mentored or counseled by my mom and dad. And they're all like, we know mom, this is, uh, this is lies. Mm. We're going to do it. We're going to do it whether for free. Cool. So they come on board and uh, the case starts. The biggest turning point was, first of all, they claimed they had tested this thing. So my dad, so all, there's all these people in the background trying to come to my dad saying, oh, we can make this go away. We'll just pay us this amount of money. Mm. You know, my dad even in some moments is like, what should we do? My mom was like, nope, I'm a praying woman and there's no, I'm going to tarnish God's name by doing that. And so while she was there, I mean, this woman was evangelizing <laughs> everybody, <Paul>. just <laughs> leading Paulette, people to Paulina. the Lord. Yo. They leading people to the Lord, man. You know what I'm saying? Just transforming that prison by the grace of God. Like, it was powerful. Mm. And so, eventually, this is, the, this is one of the coolest things that happened. So, 
they were saying that they had tested the bottles. There were 80 bottles. So my dad got a write-up from a lady, the man called Professor Ngoma, who was the best in botanics in Southern Africa. I might have gotten his name wrong, but he handed in a paper to the judge. He says, if you want to test cannabis in a liquid, this is what we're doing. This is what the cylinder, these are the colors, these are the what. He says, what the analyst is saying from this lab is lies. That's not what, this is not how the test goes. He says, and two, we don't have the equipment to test <laughs> that in this country. So that they handed in that as evidence. And then on uh, the, there was a day now they brought the lab technician who had done the test right so they've got them on the table there and then uh she's being asked this question says oh did you test the bodies yes i did okay so this guy brings out these measuring cell says how much did you remove no i i removed like 15 mils oh really okay cool here can you pour out some from a bottle and just show us that it says you remove that amount of out of it and she pours out it's visible like there's because it's a, one of the it's a see-through bottle mm. So he's like, how come? She said, no, I removed and I poured back. So you removed and poured back. Yes. Okay. So which means you removed and poured back in every bottle. She goes, so you opened every bottle. She says, yeah. So now the thing is, the way the bottles are is that if you open them, they tear. Mm. So he's like, okay, sure. check this one. And then she tears it open. It says, that looked sealed, wasn't it? Because yes. Okay. So you, you just says no maybe it's just one of the bottles okay cool and brah he just starts putting, tears it says was that sealed the opening was sealed okay cool. here's another and this is 80 bottles bro the whole place goes nuts <laughs> yes, the judge kicked us all out <laughs> yes. he's like i'll charge you guys for contempt of court this is not it's circus get out of everybody so it's only that's like the lawyers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so everyone's now watching from the windows. <laughs> and like people would come to watch this case. Like would come, the court would just all of a sudden fill up out of nowhere because people were following the story. Yeah. Like who's this lady who was, you who know, because it was- Who they're trying to free? Yeah, the Drug Enforcement Commission was so exposed. Like, like why? Like, and the judge, when he passed his verdict at the end, she got out on the December the 6th of that year uh, after 80 days. And he was like, why? He says, I don't understand. He says, this is, this is a woman with children. He says, the minimum sentence for this judge is 10 years. He says, why would you lie about something like this? He says, if I could, I would turn this around and lock you guys all up. Because this is just nonsense. You've wasted my time and you've wasted this woman's time. You had no case. But now I have to bring you up for scrutiny because like, who he just like, he really, really, really yeah. gave a mouthful. But she was free. So that's the kind of woman who's my mom. <laughs> you know, so. Why are they trying to put her in? Let me ask. Is it because of your dad? There's, from... there's, there's a lot that's been said that I've heard, but nothing I can actually say. Confirm. Is confirm. But it, it was. I mean, there is. You, you've heard statements. Because the thing is, saying any names, I realize some of these people there their families and whatnot, mm. and it was years ago. Mm. You know, I mean, my parents have decided to let it go Then I've, okay. you know, but I've heard of things that have been said, things that eventually get to us and say, well, this person in this position felt like, you know, and then, but what's crazy that eventually, um, these people came and sought forgiveness from my parents, like years later, Whoa. when they had no longer had power. Because the things that my dad had told them to, to get rid of and do was very early in their in their seats of power mm, mm. and it was like my dad is like listen god is saying don't do this don't do that and eventually when some of these people are going to court and when a new regime came and you know there was task forces and whatnot it was the very same things they were being told mm. he i mean he told us these things he says i told that man I told that man to not do this mm. And these are the things they're going to court for now. You and, know what I love yeah. your dad's story for, your dad and mom. Mm. In Africa, we don't believe that God can play a role in politics mm. because we don't hear these stories. Yeah. We don't hear the stories of politicians following God, being righteous, mm -hmm. standing up for values. 
So the more you're talking, of, and you see, again, it always comes to such a huge cost, mm-hmm. standing up for for what's right mm-hmm. for the people. Yeah. Um, you lose your jobs, you lose money, you get your wife, mm-hmm. you get. Mm-hmm. So, but I love the fact, because our generation has lost hope on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about Zambia, but I know in Kenya, like things are thick in the political realm. Mm-hmm. We don't believe that anybody righteous, even those who say that they're Christians, that's just their Trojan horse to mm-hmm. get in and really come out as themselves. Mm-hmm. So like when I'm hearing your dad's story, I'm just like, whoa, there's hope in that in that light. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'll, I'll, and that's, I'll tell you a very cool story that my dad would tell me and my mom. My dad actually had a team of fellow diplomats, ministers, different governments around Africa. And their purpose was to evangelize to fellow ministers. Mm. And one of the trips that they made was to South Africa before Mandela was allowed to see anyone in public. They went and saw Mandela in private and they led him to the Lord. What? Yeah, I think the food is here. Okay, <laughs> amazing. Our food is here. Let's take a break. Let's eat. Yeah. Thanks to, and we'll be back. Hungry? Order your favorite meals and drinks from hundreds of restaurants through the best app and have your food delivered to your doorstep. Download the Afri delivery app now. 